Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Vocation. Vocation, from its Latin origin, vocatio means to call or to summon. On this show, we talk about vocations to the priesthood and religious life. With me on the show today is Reverend Father Aneke John Paul, residing uh, presently at Abuja as the administrator, financial administrator of the theology. Yes, wow. welcome, uh, Father John Paul. Thank you. Uh, we are talking about vocations, and we are going to be talking about your vocation on this show today. So, welcome, and we are honored to have you on our hot seat. <laughs> so, kindly tell us something about, about yourself, something brief. Yeah, I actually was born in the northern part of Nigeria, Kano, to be precise, in a location we know as Sabongeli Kano. Uh, I grew up there, spent most of my childhood there, and then uh, through the, when the religious riot broke out in the early 90s, we came down to Enugu, Enugu, which is the city where my parents came from, and from there we migrated down to Omicha. So I practically grew up in the oratory of Don Bosco there, because it's just a central from my house. So from there, I became engaged in the youth activities, both in the oratory of Don Bosco and also in the parish where I originally came from. Hold it there, hold it there. I, I see you to be a man of many words. <laughs> so, um, do you know how to speak Hausa? Not really. My dad was an expert, myself, no. <laughs> oh, so you, um, you took that away from your experience. That would have been a very good one. That would have been a very good one. However, however, you are a man of many words and many languages. And um, as we move on, we are going to know about uh, about Father John Paul. Father John Paul is a special one. He's a, a special, a special priest, a special person, a humble man, and uh, somebody that uh, have worked, uh, I've worked with for many years. So, this whole idea of vocation, idea of becoming a priest. When did you start to? When did you commence this nurturing of this idea to become a priest? Well, to be honest, I can't place an exact date. But then, the original idea was for me to become a lawyer. Because I grew up in Onitsha, like I stated earlier. On Onitsha is a city where there was a, a kind of injustice on the young people. With police brutality and the rest. Uh, at the time? At the time? Yes, back then. Okay. I had a lot of... Uh, operations uh this one and that where they were ransacking uh, things and also killing a lot of youth so i felt i needed to become an advocate for the young people mm. that was my initial uh, inspiration but then gradually getting involved in the activities of don bosco mostly through the holiday camps because i i went to a lot of holiday camp, uh, camps in don bosco i felt that instead of now defending them that i could prevent uh them going into to juvenile delinquencies mm -hmm. and also being uh, held in police prisons. So that was actually what led to my vocation descendant. So it was like a shift from becoming an advocate to one, preventing them from entering into those uh, shackles, those uh, criminal activities that could lead them into prisons. So I would say that that was where my vocation began. Mm, because that's the, where the whole, the nurturing of the idea and it's from the fact that you came in contact with the solutions of Don Bosco in Onicha, in the oratory, meeting the people there, the priests and brothers there. And that means to have this shift, this paradigm shift from being a lawyer that would defend the people, the young people, to a priest that would prevent them from people who are brutalizing them and all of that, preventing them from encountering such people. Beautiful, beautiful. Can you run us through your vocation story? Yeah, it is, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a short one, but then it's You have to precise. give us in a very precise <laughs> <laughs> manner. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, 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 because the classical stages of formation is what we know. Yeah. Um, pre novitiate, uh, aspirated pre novitiate, then novitiate, and uh, philosophy, theology, and then ordination. But something happens in between. In between, yeah, um, yeah. And uh, these in-between activities are uh, places where we encounter not just brothers that eventually become companions on the long journey, mm -hmm. but also young people who uh, eventually influence our lives. Mm -hmm. And I would say that this journey began in Onicha because Onicha youth are very tough. Mm. They're very tough. When you experience them, 
they will question your motivations and then uh, you will know whether you've got the vocation actually <laughs> yeah. it's not enough you say i want to become yeah. they will test your becoming oh and good then you decide good. whether to go ahead so from that uh, when i came to ghana for the novitiate it was beautiful it was uh, awesome and even before then pre novitiate in ondo the people are very lovely they are very welcoming so these things they, they molded me into the person that i became today because Right from Ghana, as a novice, I was always going to the villages because we had nine villages, our stations, mm-hmm. we call them. So I was always, every Sunday, I would love to go there. This kind of mission, mission sent to the people was very uh, strong in my heart. And even in the uh, uh, novi- uh, post novitiate, immediately after the philosophical studies, I was always teasing my, I mean, joking, uh, saying that uh, they call to Macedonia. Okay, uh, yes. okay, okay. Well, I'm sending it to, so I felt like I'm being sent. And eventually, I was sent to Italy, where I met so many people, and I spent a greater part of my formation years there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ten years, roughly, I spent there in my formation. And uh, they also boarded me. Those mm. years were kind of tough, beautiful, and uh, quite interesting. And then I came back to the province, always with a desire for the mission, and now presently I'm in the government. Where I'm the financial administrator, and hopefully, in time, I will also get fully involved in the school, Veritas University, and mm-hmm. also in the Inca, where we are residing. Oh, as great. Residents. Great, great. Now, this is a little bit, uh, I would say, a kind of a controversial question. Uh, Looking back at your vocation history till this moment, uh, would you say that you are living a fulfilled life? Definitely. I think I am I'm a lucky person. Oh, great. It's like uh, where I am is where I've always wanted to be. You know, because it's rare to see that your vision you have for yourself coincides exactly with what you are living. Mm-hmm. There are rare moments that this could take place. And in my life presently, I feel uh, for now, <laughs> for now, I feel fulfilled. I'm happy with the choices that I've made. Because you cannot uh, talk about Why it. Why for now, my brother? <laughs> because, you know, life is lived in the present. Yeah. yeah. So, presently, I, I have this to say about myself. Yeah. And I'm also looking forward to making so many beautiful experiences uh, with the people that I'm, I'm working with. Because that is what makes a great difference. Uh, when you're at home with the people, yeah. home is where we feel at home. Exactly. I so I feel at home the kind of uh, decision that I've made and I'm happy to be a solution in the household. It has opened doors for me and mm. it will continue definitely to open doors and I'm, I'm happy being here. Great, great one. I love I love that. Now, in few words, can you please uh, say give some words of advice to young people who would want to follow your footsteps, who see you and they admire your ways and all of that. They want to follow that path in which you took. I, I, I always say that vocation is out, uh, out of formation. It means that you've got to believe first in your vocation. It's not someone telling you whether you believe, whether you have a vocation or not. You've got to decide whether you are called into this life. And it's that conviction that now prompts you to be making choices that will coincide with what you've decided. And that is what we call discernment. And then you listen attentively to the voice of God speaking to you through signs. Uh, because God will never speak to you out of the context. There is true signs and symbols, events that take place in your life. That means you've got to be very attentive. You've got to be conscious of the choices you're making. And with that, I believe your, your life will be fully a short path. Even when things don't happen when you want them to be, to happen, that you believe that uh, God's will will always manifest itself in your life. This is what has led me here so far, and I believe this is what I can offer to the others in this kind of uh, From Kanu to Enugu, and from Enugu to Onicha. In Onicha, he met Don Bosco, and everything changed for him. That is Reverend Father John Paul and K. Chinon, so um, our guest for today. So thank you very much for making it. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you, to have you around here. So. Viewers, this is the end of this episode of Vocations. Stay tuned for more episodes. I'm your host, Tony Mabio.